The Roswell UFO incident was the quintessential paranormal event that sent UFO sightings and interest on a frenzy, leaving behind new mysteries with every new explanation for the series of events that forever changed Roswell, New Mexico. The event, while far from settled, it's not really debated anymore because either side of the debate is set in what they believe and they are set on their disagreeing points and they don't really want to find a middle ground. So because of this, many think that the Roswell incident is something that's dead in the water, something that they can no longer glean new information from. Well, what if I told you that now, 77 years later, new information has been unearthed that upends both the UFO enthusiast explanation and the government's cover-up. Let's talk about the Roswell, New Mexico UFO incident. In the summer of 1947, a rancher found unidentifiable debris in his sheep pasture in Roswell, New Mexico. This seemingly innocuous event would soon ignite the firestorm of speculation and controversy that has raged on for decades. The Roswell incident as it came to be known hinges on exactly what was found on the ranch that day. Now, when this unidentified craft crash landed, the military came up, retrieved whatever crashed, and sent out a report, which actually was run by, you know, all of the local print news stations, that a unidentified flying object, a flying saucer from outer space, had been recovered. However, the US military quickly doubled back, and the next day claimed that it was a weather balloon that crashed eventually even adding a crash dummy uh, part to their story to kind of explain why they found bodies with missing fingers and missing limbs. So it's needless to say that the weather balloon explanation was way too mundane for the people that actually saw the wreckage. See, eyewitnesses painted a different picture. A picture with hieroglyphic-esque writing on a craft and material that defies natural law and physics. The dichotomy between the actual explanation and what people saw that were actually there, this has actually fueled the debate that has withstood for over 70 years. The US government's seeming haste to dismiss this incident, coupled with the subsequent refusal to release further information, only fueled the flames of speculation even more. Was it truly just a weather balloon? Or was this our actual first piece of evidence in modern time of UFOs landing and extraterrestrial life? In the following years, Roswell became synonymous with UFO and alien abductions and alien sightings. Uh, it's People take road trips to Roswell just to go to the UFO uh, crash site. It's, it's really cool. It's become a really cool place, but the mystery is still there and we still don't have real answers. The incident sparked a wave of UFO sightings across the United States and beyond, setting off a global fascination with the unknown. Theories began to circulate that the Roswell debris was in fact wreckage of an alien craft, and the US government was engaged in the cover-up to hide the truth. Now, these theories, they do have evidence, uh, but they're not exactly proven, as there are also a lot of coincidences um, and things that while we feel they can't be explained away, we don't really have proof <laughs> otherwise. Uh, still, all of the UFO and alien abduction claims have become a staple in popular culture. To this day, Roswell continues to inspire books, TV shows, movies. It's literally still captivating the public to this very day, almost 77 years after the event. Despite numerous attempts to debunk Roswell, the incident remains a hotbed of controversy and a touchstone for those who believe that we are not alone in the universe. Thus, the Roswell incident still shrouded in mystery sparked worldwide fascination about UFOs. And no one really gave us a straight answer until now. Internationally acclaimed American investigative journalist 
author and a 2016 Pulitzer Prize finalist, Annie Jacobson dropped a bombshell claim on Lex Friedman's podcast. The talented Jacobson writes for and produces programs including Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan for Amazon Studios and Clarice for CBS. She was a contributing editor to the Los Angeles Times Magazine from 2009 until 2012. Jacobson writes about war, weapons, security, and government secrets. Jacobson is best known as the author of the 2011 non-fiction book Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base, which the New York Times called cauldron stirring. Ooh, she likes to stir the pot. The learned Jacobson is also the author of Operation Paperclip, the secret intelligence program that brought Nazi scientists to America. It is a fascinating and informative read. Well, recently, Annie Jacobson was interviewed by the incredibly talented and unwavering Lex Friedman, where she said a lot, she had a lot to say about the government and its secrets. While revealing bombshell after bombshell revelation, Annie Jacobson admits to Lex Friedman that she personally has no reason to believe that aliens have ever come and visited Earth. She also claims that the entirety of the Roswell event was actually a disinformation campaign that was brought on due to and by Stalin. She even gives disturbing insights as to what exactly crashed in Roswell that day and why people saw what they saw. Check it out. In your book on Area 51, you propose an explanation that I think some people have criticized at the very end, uh, that this might've been a disinformation campaign from, I guess, Stalin, that the Roswell incident was a remotely piloted plane with a quote grotesque child sized aviator just looking back at all that now years later um what's the probability that it's true what's the probability it's not so you know i've never i've never revealed who that source is yes did you know that i know want me to tell you what the source yeah okay what's, who's the source so before i say anything on that let me let me let me speak to the the question that you asked, right? So what you asked me, what's the probability that that is still standing as an idea mm -hmm. 14, 12, 13, 14 years later, right? So I continued to work with that source for years afterwards. We talked about this. Look, I mean, his whole family knew it was him. And I knew his family because I was an integral part of, you know, I was at his house, met all his kids, grandkids. And, and we should say the source is the main expert advisor behind the story that it was, maybe you can explain what the story is that you report in the book, that it was a disinformation campaign created by Stalin to cause mass hysteria in the United States. Yes. The, the very kind that we've been speaking about with the CIA and so on. Yes, predicated on the, on the narrative of the War of the Worlds, right? And the War of the Worlds, when it was a radio program in the United States, made people go crazy. Oh my God, we're being invaded by aliens. Well, the government was always interested in this story and Joseph Stalin was too. We know that from declassified documents, right? And so the source told me that the the, uh, the reason for this program and that the real Roswell crash remains were, in fact, it was a, a black propaganda hoax infiltrated, you know, or rather predicated at this idea that you were going to overwhelm America's early warning air defense system, cause mayhem, and maybe be able to attack the United States. That was the plan. And Stalin was also messing with the United States, messing with Truman, who sort of, you know, turned his back on him, right, at Potsdam. And so... Um, this idea was, and the reason that the source is important, and unlike, you know, a lot of people, I saw, I, I saw this, I saw that, I learned that, was according to the source, once it was, once it was determined that this was a hoax and that Stalin was able to get a craft over the United States and it crashed and it had, you know, people inside of it. They were people that were sort of deformed and meant surgically altered to look like aliens. The United States government decided that it needed to know what 
on Earth that was all about and if it was possible for us to have the same program. This according to the source, right? And so it sounds preposterous. And if it was just someone saying, I, you might say, well, it's ridiculous, tell me, and get them onto another subject. But the difference was is this source, who is very well-placed and friends with all of the other 75 people, you know, told me this as a confession, right? A real tearful confession, because what he said is he was involved in the American program to do the same thing. And people died because there were human experiments that went on. And I, I write about this in the last 12 pages of Area 51. It was an explosive, you know, revelation. And I felt very confident in writing this because the source wanted it written. Wow. Human bodies experimented on surgically, physically, mentally. I don't know. That's like really disturbing. I mean, it's kind of hard to believe. But then again, so are aliens. Now, I'm not saying she's absolutely right and nothing happened in Roswell, but I have read a few of her books and I trust her investigative journalism uh, and I personally trust her to tell the truth. I will say though, it doesn't mean that she could not have been handed misinformation. The government of course knows that she's well trusted and that she is so internationally acclaimed. It would be easier for them to give her a little bit of misinformation um, hidden with real information to kind of throw her off because then she puts this on into the world and fools all of us but she gave some very disturbing details honestly to me it makes sense right it makes sense that something crashed in roswell and the military was like holy crap a ufo oh my god we got extraterrestrials like put it in the paper we want to be the first wow look what we did y'all we have aliens we're gonna reverse engineer their stuff right the next day when they realized what it was yeah, I can definitely see them redacting, retracting, taking back that statement. I can definitely see them trying to be like, no guys, it was a weather balloon. Or, I mean, any excuse, but they use weather balloon for this excuse. Simply because they're not going to tell us the truth in the sense that America is not going to be like, yeah, we were fooled by our adversaries. Um, you know, screw our national security. Someone flew uh, something into our airspace and crash landed it into Roswell. And we were so wild and a little dumb and we thought it was aliens. They're not going to admit that. I mean, I wouldn't admit that if I was running the country and I'm like, I got fooled by my adversary. They made me think it was an alien. So it actually makes sense for them to then cover it up with something ridiculous. And we're like, oh, they're trying to explain away the aliens. But in reality, they were covering up just how kind of dumb they were to fall for something like that. So again, I'm not saying that she's 100% correct because she could have been fed false information. But what she's saying makes sense. And she has a top-notch source. Now that source is Al O'Donnell, who is the nuclear weapons engineer who armed wired and fired 186 nuclear weapons. I guess for both ends, because he would know what actually happened, but then he also would spread the misinformation. <laughs> but honestly, that would explain what a lot of the witnesses claim to have seen, like the, or what the government explained as crash dummies, like the people with the missing limbs and fingers, those could have been those experimented on surgically altered people. The only thing, I mean, even the hieroglyphics, I'm like, yeah, our adversaries could make some fake thing up to throw us off even more if that's plan part of the disinformation, or as she said, to kind of cause that hysteria here in the United States. That would make sense to make it look almost relatable, but very different, oh, alien, if you will. The only thing that doesn't get explained is the claims of the material, like the the metal that would kind of bend back. You couldn't bend it. Like, you could bend it. It was easy to crunch and bend, but it would flattened back out like that wasn't explained but that could have been hearsay so does that mean that the roswell ufo mystery is over well no because again she could have been fed the misinformation and honestly she also states that while she doesn't have reason to believe through what she has found that aliens have visited earth she claims that some of her colleagues and the people that she's interviewing and these higher up officials that she knows of and is connected with in the military and in the government, some of them do genuinely believe that we've been in contact with aliens and do believe some of the stuff, the information that's coming out now. So 
she, even she can't guarantee exactly what's happening. They're not giving her full access. She's just saying that from her perspective, she doesn't see that. But there are people out there that believe it, and that belief has to come from somewhere. You see, the truth about Roswell remains that we can't go back in time and see what happened. And a lot of the people that were present for the Roswell UFO event in 1947 are no longer with us. And because of that, a lot of the truths and actual facts of what happened in Roswell, New Mexico went with them. What really happened in Roswell, New Mexico is now information that is lost to time, or at least lost in the CIA filing cabinet that no one looks in. <laughs> Now, Annie Jacobson had a lot to say in this recent interview with Lex Friedman, uh, and she even brought up some really great questions that I brought up in a recent AI UFO video. Intelligence problem, because Jacques believes that this is some kind of intelligence, right? Which really, the closest I can do to wrapping my head around that takes me to consciousness, right? The idea of what is consciousness. And I think that's where it becomes very interesting. The interview is well worth the watch, and it's gonna be linked below, as well as Lex's YouTube channel, so you can check out all of his interviews. He's really great. Now, those who are sad about this Roswell revelation, don't be. While one chapter in the UFO story ends, a new one begins, with our military now claiming that they're developing portable UFO detection devices. So don't forget, y'all. Keep looking up.